I want to take just the next few minutes and share with you something from a text that I believe the Holy Spirit has dropped in my heart for this Sunday. And next Sunday, we may come back and do some strategic conversation around some of these principles. But uh, if you will stand with me this morning, I want to take you to the book of Luke chapter 10. And Jesus has selected 72 disciples to go out, thoroughly equipped them. And now they go out and they come back. And when the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him. They joyfully reported to him. Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. Yes, he told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. But don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you, but rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. And at the same time, Jesus was filled with the joy of, of the Holy Spirit, and he said, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever and for revealing them to the childlike. Yes, Father, it pleased you to do it this way. My Father has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the Son except the Father, and no one truly knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then when they were alone, he turned to his disciples and said, Blessed are the eyes that see what you have seen. I tell you, many prophets and kings longed to see what you see, but they didn't see it. And they longed to hear what you hear, but they didn't hear it. And may God add his blessing to our reading of his word. You can be seated. Doyle made a statement in the first service and again in this service. And he spoke of those events that took place and they were such confident boosters. And I opened my notes and wrote that word, those words in the top corner, confident boosters. I want this word to be a confident booster today. And that's exactly what happened in this text because they come back and they're rejoicing and all of a sudden in their rejoicing, their confidence is built because now they know that the mission that God assigns them to, which is the Great Commission, is something that is mission possible and not mission impossible, right? Because they have experienced for themselves, they have used the name of Jesus. And the Word of God tells us that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue confess. So they used the name of Jesus and they understood the dynamics that had been given to them through using his name and walking in such power, confidence boosters. These 72 guys, the scripture said, they returned with great joy. Now, I like that. And one of the reasons they came back with such joy is because Jesus had promised that all power and authority and dominion would be given to him and through him would be given to us. So we have power and authority and dominion in Christ. If you want to review this, you can go to chapter 6 of Romans, and it gives you a good insight on the fact that death now has no more dominion over him because he conquered death. But now we can say, and it's in in Romans chapter 6, that sin has no more dominion over you. Now, what does that mean? See, dominion was given to man when man was created by Almighty God. And God gave Adam and Eve dominion over every living thing. But sin came into the picture and the dominion was taken from them and Satan had limited control, but yet he had dominion. It was only through the cross of Calvary and the resurrection that that dominion was seized from Satan and given back to Christ so that he could will it to his people and say, this is what I give to you. And now the body of Christ has the power and we have authority and we have dominion. Well, some would say, well, what in the world does that have to do with me as a believer having dominion? He goes on to describe the kind of dominion that we have. I love this when he says, and I give you this authority over all the powers of the enemies and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them and nothing will injure you. Now, immediately, 
Everybody thinks of snake infestation somewhere or physical snakes somewhere. But let me just throw another thing in here. Oh, perhaps it's physical snakes. And we do see Paul's life when he went to Malta and he had an encounter with snakes. But at the same time, I think he may be referring to something that they were familiar with. They have been with him when he spoke of the sect of the Sadducees and the Pharisees and he called them snakes and he called them vipers and they were poisonous in what they said. You know, that's interesting to me. It was in Luke chapter 10, verse 18, that he told them, uh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong reference on that one. Here it is. In, um, in Matthew chapter 23, he said, go ahead and finish what your ancestors started, you snakes, sons of vipers. Uh, how will you escape the judgment of hell? That's pretty strong. That's very strong. But Jesus is now saying to the believers, you have such authority that you can walk among the snakes and the scorpions, and you can crush them. They don't have dominion over you. Now, I, I, that needs to soak in for every one of us because some would say, well, I'm not fighting those kinds of fights. Well, I want to tell you the venomous attack against the body of Christ and, and the insults and the anger and the hatred and all that Satan is spewing out against you in the workplace, in home, in school, wherever it may be. You have authority in the midst of it all to walk in victory. And you need to be confident that this is under your feet and not over your head. It's not taking dominion over you. You have been given dominion over that. And I believe God helps us to collect ourselves, to collect our thoughts in the name of Jesus and be able to maneuver through whatever snake pit it might be that we have to deal with in life. I, I, I guess I should ask the question, but no raise of hands. How many of you have been in a snake pit recently, you know? And you've been trying to maneuver through it in what is the safest route for you, for your family, for everybody concerned. It is that we have authority over in the name of Jesus. You see, there's a very interesting thing also that we see in the scripture. Jesus pointed this out to us that when we have such authority, we can walk in victory. And he's given us this assurance all through the word of God. We see some things that would really relate to this. It was actually something that happened in battle and it was something that continued for generations Whenever a kingdom would overtake another kingdom or a king and his troops would overcome this group, they would take the kings and line them up. There might be several kings in a battle, but they would line them up if they had defeated them and the command would be given by the commander. And he would say, now, lay on the ground and I want all of my leaders, go put your foot on their neck. And I want you to assume this posture because it is symbolic and it is letting all know that we have put our enemy under our feet. Let me give you a reference on this. In Joshua chapter 10, verse 24, it says this, and when they brought them out, these were the captives, Joshua told the commanders of the army, come and put your feet on the king's necks. And they did as they were told, don't even be afraid or discouraged, Joshua told his men. Be strong and courageous, for the Lord is going to do this for all of your enemies. He said, I want you to be encouraged by what you see. I want you to be encouraged by what he has done, but I want you to know when we leave this place, he will continue to do for you what he has done here. Well, let's put it where we are. We can overcome the enemy of our soul that is trying to take our attention and trying to take us off mission. But as long as we stay on mission, what is mission for all of us? It is to live the good news. It is to share the good news. But the good news is not just something we share in four or five points. It's what we live out in our own life, that Christ has died. He has been raised from the dead and the promise of him coming again. And we now are already seated in heavenly places in Christ. Jesus. That ought to make the world want to shout when we realize we have that kind of positioning. So be confident. Be encouraged. Recognize that God's for you, so who could possibly be against you? 
And one of the last things I want you to see in this portion of Scripture, and and I'm going to close with this. I, I think we've been ministered to this morning is Jesus said to them, uh, yes, I I saw what you're talking about. And they said to him, here's a good way to look. He said, I have given you all authority. They said, Lord, even the demons obeyed us when we used your name. I just have to say this quickly. I hope you use his name a lot. I hope you liberally use his name in your prayer, in your conversation, for it's in the name of Jesus that we're overcomers. But here's what Jesus said. They are saying this because they are so joyful. They reported this and said, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. Jesus said, yes, yes, yes. I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. I have always, always put that in context of before creation and Satan being thrown out of the kingdom as it was. But I look at it different. Perhaps it could mean that. But Jesus' response to them was emphatic about a moment, an encounter, when they said, even the demons trembled when we used your name. We have authority over them. And he said, yes, I know it. I saw it happen. I observed it happening. I watched Satan's stronghold just fall to the wayside when you used my name. I saw Satan fall like lightning immediately. When you spoke my name, I, I, I think that's going on right now. That he is observant of us exercising our posture in him as believers to stand fast, even in the midst of the snake pit <laughs> and the venomous things that are thrown our way and that could potentially not only poison us, but take a whole group of people. We have authority in the name of Jesus. And every time we use his name, all of a sudden I believe that there is rejoicing in heaven because Satan is defeated when we stand our ground in the name of the Lord. Well, I don't have time to go here, but I know the next thing is some would say, but you have no idea what I personally battle, what I personally struggle with, the cycle that I have found myself in of trying to live as an overcomer. I'm gonna go there next week with the help of the Lord. But I wanna tell you this morning, sin hath no more dominion because death hath no more dominion. And when we use his name, we are edified and joyful, but he is joyful also through the power of the spirit. We recognize it because we are walking in alignment with his desire for our lives. There's no reason for us to stay overwhelmed because he's with us. There's no reason for us to say it just can't turn around because he is greater than all of the obstacles that we would possibly face in life. Again, if God's for us, who could be against us? He sends us out with instruction and encouragement and we should return from every task, every mission with joy that says it was fulfilled because of the authority and the power that you gave me. My marriage, it turned around because of the power and the authority that I have in your name to fulfill the mission of that covenant that I found it so hard to fulfill. The business is turning around because I've chosen to go by the word of the Lord rather than the wise and the clever devices and thinking of of the world. Nobody can put a handle on what's going on in the marketplace from day to day, but God can give us the assurance that he is Lord over every day in the marketplace and he's wanting us to stand fast in our faith in him. Are you following what I'm saying? Maybe it's with the family. Maybe it's with education. I have no idea what it may be in your life. But I want you to have a confident booster today that God is for you and he's not against you and that he has given you the authority and you the power to walk right through the heart of all of those things that might be trying to poisonous you 
and to destroy you. And you need to see yourself. You need to see yourself with your foot on the neck of the enemy. You need to see yourself. I need to see myself. And who's the enemy? What's the enemy? I'm not going to name him for you. You name it. But we need to see ourselves with our foot on the neck of the enemy. We have defeated him. And he will stay defeated because we have walked in obedience to the Lord. Do you receive this today? Be confident in who you are in Christ. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for this precious time that we have together in your presence. I'm so encouraged today that you are truly for us. Oh, Lord, just let it reverberate in our spirit today that you have given us the power and the authority to do the things that we think are impossible, but all things are possible through Christ. In the name of Jesus, for the glory of God, we just give it to you and and realign ourselves with, if it be repentance, if it be with praise, back to that place of knowing I can accomplish what you have asked me to do. I can overcome what you've asked me to overcome. I can prevail in the arena that you have given when you are with me. And we commit ourselves to it in the name of Jesus for the glory of God. Can everybody say amen to that? Do you receive the word of the Lord today? Get a picture in your head of being the victor and not the victim in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with me, please, everybody. Thank you again for being in the house of the Lord and receiving all that has happened. Thank you for receiving the word of the Lord through instrumentation today and our guest. There's something special about the anointed musicians that God raises up. Amen. So I'm glad you've been here. If you know somebody that needs to be here for the next service, let them know. Get on social media and say, Dole Dykes is there, and then I'll sneak up on the word with them, okay? But get them here to hear a guitar picker. Dole, thank you again. He'll be back at the back at his table. God bless every one of you. Thank you for being here today. And uh, we just pray this is a wonderful, wonderful week for you and your family. Now may the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the sweet, sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you all until we gather again in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all.